This is the summertime piano tutorial jazz version. My name is Paul Toby. Thank you once again for joining me. The purpose of this video is to take the standard summertime by George Gershwin, which I think we all know, and apply the bossa nova style to it. And we're going to dive into the chords and the scales to play. And I'll show you all the details on how I play those chord voicings in the left hand and play scales in the right hand. And that's going to lead us towards the next video, which is a little more about the soloing. So if you missed the first couple of videos in this playlist, there is a link that I'm going to post up here. And in the first video, we talked about the bass line and how to write a bass line for Bossa Nova. And then what we did was we added a drum track to that. And then in the second video, we started to figure out how to play the bossa nova authentic rhythm in the left hand. So if you missed that video, I'm just going to play a little bit of it now and that'll help us dive into it. So let's just play that left hand rhythm and we'll, we'll show you what that sounds like. So as you can see, that left hand is an important part of the entire bossa nova feel. So we're going to dive into the chords and scales right after this. Okay, let's dive into the chords and scales for summertime. And you've got this G minor 7 chord, then a 2-5 of G minor 7, which is A minor 7 flat 5 to D7 flat 9. Please notice that in the lead sheet, we've got piano, bass, and drums. So we're really just concerned with the first line, which is the lead sheet for the piano part. All right, so the first chord is G minor 7. Now, my version of putting the initial voicings for the left hand together you can find in a video that I'm going to post up here. And it's really about taking three, five, seven, and nine and doing them either in root position or second inversion. And what that means is I just took the top two notes from the first one and I put them at the bottom. And that's a pretty cool way of playing that chord. Then when we get to the A minor 7 flat 5, that's a new one. And I haven't got a video about that one yet, so pay attention to this. When you play A minor 7 flat 5 in the root position, and then you look at that chord, if you go down a third, that's an F7-9 chord. It's the same chord. So you can play the same voicing that you use for F7-9 chord for the A minor 7 flat 5 chord in either inversion. And then of course when you get to the D7 flat 9 chord, you can use the tritone substitution of A flat 7 9 chord. So those two chords together sound like this. It's actually a great thing to do because it's sometimes tough to remember all of the chords for every single different type of chord and all the different keys. So you, you start to figure out these little substitutions. So those three chords together are Just keep doing those 2-5-1 progressions that I showed you in that video that I posted earlier. Then we get to the B flat. Then we get to A flat. Okay, so we already did the 2 5 1 in G minor. So. What is the purpose of that? It's to keep the left hand from going all over the place. Just finding these voicings that are close together. That's what's really cool about my system. Now, when we get to the scales, the G minor 7 chord is just a bebop scale. So I'm going to post a video up here of how that all works. But essentially, G minor 7 bebop scale is this. With 
with the passing chord being B. Now the A minor 7 flat 5 chord, that's a bit of a different scale. So let's play that one a little slowly so you can catch that. Then the D7 flat 9 chord is the same scale. It just starts on a different note. Then the 2 5 1 in B flat, which is C to F to B flat, is this. Then when we get to the E flat chord, it's. And that's pretty much it. That's literally the whole tune. There aren't any more chords than that. So those are the scales you want to use. The other scale you can use is the blue scale. And the blue scale is really helpful in this tune because it has that kind of soul feel. And I'm going to play the song in just a minute, incorporating all of those chords, voicings, all of those scales, and the blue scale. You start to figure out scales over time, but really the bebop scale and the blues scale are really useful in this particular tune. And figuring out fingerings for them and inversions and little passing notes and whatever. The other thing you can do is, of course, you can spell out the chords. Obviously, that adds more interest to the solo. So let's go to the solo now and let's play it from the beginning. So that was pretty cool. You saw when I was doing the 251 in B flat that I did something like this. So I started playing that scale that we learned. But I started just by doing this passing thing. That's kind of that's a that's a common riff in jazz. So let's do a little more of that. So you can see that I'm starting to mix up the bebop scales, the blues scales, and even the spelling of the chords. That's really the whole point of soloing is you want to find these structures and things that you can count on to sound good rather than just 
thinking that you're just going to play random notes. So that's really helpful when it comes to soloing. In the next video, we're going to go a little bit deeper on this summertime jazz piano tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been really fun for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about this particular style of playing. If you want to drill down on something and you want to ask a question, I'll make a video about it or I'll just answer your question in the feed. So thanks so much for your time. My name is Paul Toby. Have a great day. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're making five videos a week, just like this one on various aspects of music and the music business. So I'd really appreciate it if you could come back and join me another time. Take care.